innovation and social innovation often emerges from dire need. <laughs> I'm Christy Davis, the Executive Director of Lian Center for Social Innovation at Singapore Management University. I'm in the social sector. I'm all about changing people's lives or working with people that facilitates positive change in their lives. There are three core principles of collaboration and partnering, equity, mutual benefit, and transparency. And each of those components must be present if we are going to find a way to overcome the natural um, chasms between us. So for example, if your goal is to work with the community to provide clean water, simple metrics might be how many did not have access before, how many have access after. It could be, is the mother in the family walking hours and hours to a water source and now she doesn't have to. As a result of not having to walk hours to a water source, is she able to work instead and help provide for her family? Perhaps then her children can go to school because instead of walking hours with her for water, the family is able to pay for their school fees and send them off for their education. And generally speaking, when you do that, it's pure philanthropy or it's not a sustainable solution. You know, you, or you parachute into a community and you drop a couple of wells in and then you leave and you go back in five or ten years and the, well, and the well isn't operating anymore because there wasn't anybody to maintain it if something broke. So the infrastructure around solutions is all about partnerships. And sometimes they're very unconventional or unlikely. Um, you know, it is the community member, it is partnering with local government, uh, it's local business, and finding um, how each of them can pool those resources that they have uh, that generates um, positive impact and a multiplier effect um, for everybody involved. And we need to decide what does success look like? What does impact look like? How can we agree on those metrics together? Innovation and social innovation often emerges from dire need. We're so interconnected in this day and age that we have to look at the multiplicity of dimensions and connections and networks that surround this entrenched issue. It's entrenched because it's multidimensional uh, and that makes it really hard, which is all the more reason that a single actor in just one sector um, is probably not going to be effective in tackling it for good. Traditionally, government would do government things and the private sector would generate jobs and generate profits and civil society was the voice of the people. But now there's a lot of shared interests and a lot of shared space, uh, whether it's job creation or social services or making sure that the voice of the people reaches those in policy that need to hear that. And there's a lot of opportunity to harness that, uh, that overlap. I think the pace of change in the social sector uh, is just as fast as the pace of change in the world. And with that, though, comes the opportunity to partner and collaborate in new ways. And I think that's the biggest change that I see in the last five years, is the desire from the social sector, uh, whether it's an NGO or a university or a local uh, not-for-profit organization, uh, to partner with others that are not like themselves to try and tackle the challenges of, of the world.